when the pain knocks on the door and we shut the door in pain's face, pain will knock again. It stays quiet and then when love comes, pain comes with it. A knock on the door, they appear there together. Love speaks and pain speaks and you close the door at both of them. We'll not offer a full-on technique, but just to understand, technically, this is what happens. On the first step of the healing process, healing process for this sake of this model with four stages. On the first stage, we meet love, either by uh, being loved, having some wonderful sweet words, very soft touch, kindness, real, genuine love that is uh, brought to us or given to us by somebody who loves us. Or, if you want to do it inwardly as an exercise, you remember what it's like to be loved. If you do that in a vivid way enough, it works almost just the same, or at least to a good degree. Yeah? As people can... Um, stop functioning because they are anxious about something that doesn't exist, you can be ecstatic thinking of love. And you will actually enter the frequency of love as the people who are having anxiety disorder enter the frequency of all their problems all the time, or to a good degree enter this frequency. You can get into it by imagining if you really live the imagination. When you imagine eating an apple, you will have saliva. So we are interested in the saliva. We imagine in order to create the effect of love inside. It's a skill. If you trained a bit in meditation, it can be done. Other option is with a person that loves us. Now in the moment of love, we do what we explained before. We feel consciously how we resist. Don't interfere. Don't Stay open and don't try to close more than normal. I, I don't know if you've seen, there are these scenes, there are these very huggy parents. I don't know if you've seen huggy parents and they hug their kids so often and then often the child is like, I'm being hugged again. <laughs> yeah. He's definitely not open to embrace it. Maybe he's a teenager, yeah? He was hugged, 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 being 8, 9, 10 and then when they are 14 and they have their attitude and their clothes and their type of music and whatever teenage gods that they have there and then when they're hugged they're like this person is bigger than me and uh, gives me money I can't resist more but I'll be passively closed yeah so you see how you are loved and you are like <clears throat> or maybe maybe like somebody spills acid on you there are ways and ways of being close to love but you let it in like a scientist you see, traumas are tricky and sneaky, yeah, to make a rhyme. They often, you're like, okay, now I want to solve the trauma. Well, I can't find it. Well, if you want to find the trauma, polarize it. When you are loved, the trauma will surface. When you sit and you try to kind of autotherapy or you sit in a therapy, yeah, it's fine. And then when love comes... The trauma is there, but the therapy is not there. So when you are loved, bring the therapy element. Therapy through what? Therapy through awareness. You allow the resistance to come. You feel it. And if you train open, close, being aware of opening, closing, and, being, and learning to do that consciously, you will see, okay, now the trauma is rising. Now I resist the love. I resist the love by certain contractions. Maybe I get some goosebumps. Maybe something. Maybe I contract like this. Maybe I'm completely distracted. There's people that get completely indifferent. Start to think about what I saw in the news. It gets too intimate. Others, they get sleepy. Whatever your resistance, you look at it. Now, you make your resistance like an object of meditation. You really feel it. You behold it. And a story will rise with it. Either a story with words and with situations and memories, or a kind of unfolding, an energetic unfolding. Once you are attentive to it, because it's like a constipated part of you. Until now, 
what did you do? You always looked away from the pain, away from the resistance, and uh, destroyed your relationship, starved your heart. Now you go the other way. Instead of looking away, you look straight at. Straight at. Okay, resistance, I'm looking. Continue. Continue closing. Uh -huh. And then it's embraced. You do not push the resistance away, but rather you love and embrace that part of you that hurts. Embracing the part that hurts, we start the fourth stage, which is processing the pain. Processing the pain, basically, pain becomes trauma. Pain becomes imposing. Pain dominates us when we didn't listen to the entirety of the story of the pain. Because pain always comes with a story. Yeah, emotional pain comes with a story. When the pain knocks on the door and we shut the door in pain's face, pain will knock again. It stays quiet, and then when love comes, pain comes with it. A knock on the door, they appear there together. Love speaks and pain speaks, and you close the door at both of them. Now you consciously allow yourself to be loved, you open the door, love speaks and pain speaks, and guess what? You, you listen. Okay, yeah, all right, so that breakup was really, really painful. That thing that happened in childhood, I thought it was banal, it was really painful. Or maybe there's not even a story. It's just pain, 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 pain. Yeah, you listen to it. It says, hurts, hurts, hurts. Yes, it hurts. I hear you. I hear you. You don't need to force a memory on it. But to be conscious with what's actually there, not to invent, not to exaggerate, not to reduce what's there, not to put too many mental boxes on it. Just be present. And as you do this, you gradually reprogram yourself until now, a hundred times, he avoided pain. So we always guessed to push the pain and push the love away because he doesn't want to look at the pain. Now this time, he looked straight at the pain. Okay, put it there. I think we should still avoid the pain because we have a history. But let's try again. And then the second, third, fourth, fifth time when you look at the pain, they say, okay, this is, let's uh, change our surfing uh, algorithms and say, no, he wants to look at the pain. So you look at the pain, and then you let pain in, you let love in, pain will not stay very long. Pain will stay as long as it's, until it's fully heard. When it's finished doing its dance and telling its story, pain will be gone and love will remain. Yeah? Mother Teresa, she said it very nicely. It's a beautiful quote. In the end of pain, there is love. In the end of pain, there is love. But if you are always before pain, there is no love. You're always before pain. Pain comes, you close the door. Pain comes, you close the door. So, before pain, there's no love. There's indifference and superficiality and starvation of the heart. This is the idea. Yeah? Do it uh, in your life slowly, gradually, with moderation. You cannot just tear out your wounds with a knife. You put a little bit of balm. Of what? Of love, of acceptance, of embracing, of awareness, awareness, awareness. You listen kindly to your own pain. Once you stop avoiding pain, you stop avoiding love. They come together. So you are there, you are with your beloved, you lie in bed, your beloved looks at you with love, cuddles you, kisses you, and you feel the resistance coming. You were open and now suddenly you are not open. Good. You say, sweetheart, remember I told you about that lecture I heard? Now I'm having the resistance coming. Okay. Look, it feels like this. In my belly it feels like this. It's not your fault, sweetheart. I know you don't want to hurt me, but I really need to cry now. And if you have a lover that loves you, he'll let you cry. You cry your tears once, two times. Maybe 35 times, whatever, as much times as needed. But every time you let some of the pain in and you let it be embraced with your consciousness, more love can come in. Yeah, to quote Khalil Gibran, suffering digs deep in the heart so that the waters of happiness can go deeper.
every time you allow it in, also love can come deeper inside of you and gradually this mechanism will dissolve. When we stop avoiding pain, we will stop avoiding love. And like I said, with moderation, rather to do it in a few spontaneous sessions, either by yourself or with your beloved, as things happen naturally, than to try to overcome all your life traumas in one go and maybe re-traumatize yourself because it was too much pain for your digestion. Yeah, it's like a cow that eats and then rises the food again, chews it again and eats with another stomach. The pain needs to be digested with seven stomachs. Don't rush the process, but if you do it carefully, patiently, with moderation, it will work wonderfully. Personally, I could not be touched in the chest, especially in the left part of the chest and in many parts of the body. I would feel horrible. It was like I'd have goosebumps. And my tongue would, uh, the left part of my tongue would uh, get numb in a very unpleasant way in my lip. And it was just, it was just my lover caressing me. And then the, after the second, third time, all my lovers, they, they knew, don't touch there, don't touch there, don't touch there. You can touch, uh, play with that elbow. Is, <laughs> yeah. Very uh, restricted area, like what they have with the police. Yeah, area secured, uh, blockages and so forth. And then um, we did exactly this. Said, okay, now I want to get over this. So caress me. And the caress And I would cry and shout and jump on the bed. And my body would shake. And it was horrible. And after a few sessions, I don't remember, maybe three or four, but pretty intense, pretty painful. I would do it slower and more moderate now that I have white hair, but I didn't have white hair then. Um, I would do it slower now. But uh, after three or four times, it's basically fine, mostly fine. Mostly I can be touched and I'm fine. Sometimes it gets a little bit re-triggered, but quite rarely. And my body is now pretty much given to love and to my lover. This was the trauma. It was somehow set in the flesh. It brought out a lot of memories. But more than memories, it was just a sensation. And the sensation needed to, be, to come out. And rather than avoiding this horrible sensation, I went straight towards it. And it was an experience. It wasn't easy as a process, but it was an experience. And now, to a good degree, it's not fully healed. But to a good degree, it's healed and there is uh, an openness to love from that direction. So the key sentence of this lecture, how to be more loved, how to allow love in, by choosing to confront our pain related to not being loved, choosing to confront that, to embrace that, to be conscious of that, piece by piece drop by drop, patiently, until it's done. You go towards the feeling. You somehow create, yeah, you let the, you put the cheese, you let the mice out, yeah. You create a loving situation, either inwardly or outwardly, and then the resistance comes, and you stay, you can say simply, yes, you stay very present to it, but rather you go towards it. You aim to feel it and to let it free and to go to its essence. You polarize it with your consciousness. The pain is your Shakti, is your woman, whether you're a man or a woman. And you who are looking, you polarize that. You become conscious of it, you set it free until it settles. So when the resistance to love comes as sleepiness, two options, sleep or don't sleep, cold shower. You can just, even just the legs, normally, if you just take from the knees down, it gives you 15 minutes in which you will not sleep. And then you go and cuddle, or you can cuddle there in the shower. And um, yeah, and take it from there and see what happens, because... This uh, shutting down resistance, when you don't let it, it's, it's like um, 
we have uh, snakes here. It's like the snake escaping. Yeah, it wants to escape consciousness. Because again, it wants to escape. We gave it somewhere the plan. We told it, stay hidden. Okay? Dear pain, stay hidden. I don't want to see you. Got you. And now he's hiding all the time. So he's trying to hide through sleepiness. And we need to... And then you see, when you wash your feet and you can't sleep, the snake will, instead of hiding, will bite. And you stay there. Okay. Now I'm super angry and so forth. It will try in all sorts of ways, again, because it got that order to stay hidden. And it will test you, like in the fairy tales. You will have a test and another test and another test, and eventually you will meet the pain. And cry your tears, shout your shouts, shake your shakes, shake your body, and it will be released. Yeah, yes. and I would always uh, take care when you are when you are going towards trying to overcome the resistance um, reaction, whatever that may be. Uh, don't do it by resisting it more. You know, like for example, if you have this sleepiness thing, if you want to stay awake then do it softly, walk a little bit, take a deep breath, take some fresh air, it's, or take a shower, but not with an aggression towards yourself, not mm -hmm. because you hate what is happening and you want it to change and you just make it worse and worse. So try to always find a good balance. It's, it's very fine to choose because you're a free human being not to sleep when you don't want to sleep. But then treat your body kindly even you put some cold water onto your feet and onto your legs and treat yourself kindly even though you will go out and and you say okay my sweet body now it's time to stay a little bit more awake because we want to find this one thing so let's take a little walk together outside i love you very much and we'll stay awake so try to come with that attitude only if it comes spontaneously you don't need to re-evoke it you put the cheese and wait for the mouse. And if the mouse doesn't come and there's only love, fine. <laughs> but if you put the cheese and there is love and then the mouse comes with the pain, let it tell the story. And if it tells you about the same event that you have known, very good. Maybe it tells you something else. Let it come spontaneously from itself. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content on spirituality, Tantra and more. And if you want to sign up for our online classes or for our retreats, you can see our website on the description below.